Hey, hi, hello, welcome, welcome back. I'm Heather or Miss Polstoy if you're one of my students and we are closing down National Band Book Week with our Freed Between the Lines, the close and kind of culmination. I've had a great week. I've had a great reading week. I've learned a lot. I found access to some really cool websites that I am going to chat about in just a second. But I have one final book that I read for Band Book Week and I decided to close off my week with Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I've never read one. I, I mean, I've looked at them and I certainly recommend them and I definitely have them on my shelf to give to the kids. But this was my first one that I read. I figured I'd just jump in I'm a little further into the series. I think this is number 13 and I read The Meltdown. Thoughts? Um, mm hmm yep, read one. <laughs> Sorry, unpopular opinion here. Mm. Yeah, um, it's like stream of consciousness met stand-up comedy for a middle schooler. And I don't think I'm the audience, so I think I'm just going to move on from there. I will not be picking up another one. For me personally, probably a two-star. For my students who absolutely love these... Uh, yeah, it was another one. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Um, we're just not going to critique it. Anyway, <laughs> um, got that one done. The cool thing, honestly, about this whole week is that I have read so many books that were on my shelf, just sitting there waiting for me to read. So I get to cross off a bunch of things that I actually own that are like, that have been around. So that's kind of fun that I'm, I'm checking off a bunch of books that, um, I already owned. So yay for me for that. This big pile, um, some of the ones that I, I listened to or I read previously, um, I just don't have, but um, I'm thinking I did pretty good for Band Book Week. That's a, that's a chunky chunk. And my goal for the 24 BB, I'm kicking butt. I think 17, I think I'm on number 17. I think let me just double check here, but I think this might be, which is fantastic, honestly, because yeah, that goal, I was hurting. I, I was not making good, significant, wasn't making much progress on my goal for 24 BB until this week. So I knew I would, I knew what I was doing for this week. So I knew I was gonna have some positive ones there. Yeah, yay. So Diary of a Wimpy Kid makes number 17 on my goal for 24 banned books in 2024. Celebration. All right, so let's just talk real quick about why Diary of a Wimpy Kid is being banned and where, because that's actually kind of fascinating. So it is highlighted and banned and, and kind of censored in several states. Texas and Florida popped up pretty quick for Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Some of the things that I saw, bullying, not a good role model, that kind of thing were kind of what the questions were. There was something about it being too woke. Granted. This is the only one I've read. Woke. Um, the first 20 pages, I mean, we're talking about winter and I'm, I'm unfamiliar with where he lives. Somewhere that gets snow. They were having like heat waves and snow and heat waves and snow. And he was talking about climate change for like 20 pages. So I, I guess that's woke. I don't, I don't know. Um, in any case, <laughs> I didn't see anything outside the norm. I, it was pretty typical um, kid drama, middle school. Uh, it's got kind of potty humor a little bit. Lots of cold uh, references. Anyway, here was the um, fascinating thing that I found out was that the whole series, Die River Wimpy Kid, I guess in 2023, has been banned in Tanzania. So it's an entire country that wants nothing to do with 
Die of a Wimpy Kid. They cited some pretty interesting reasons for it, but I mean, it's a government shutdown for that one. Like, booksellers had to remove it off their shelves, schools had to um, remove it off their shelf due to claims that they violate cultural norms and morals. It was um, deemed way too progressive or um, against the the culture in Tanzania and so it was a ban announced by the education minister Adolf Makenda and so it goes against Tanzanian traditions and customs and endangers the quality of education for Tanzanian children yeah like they were going through kids backpacks to remove the books so there's that I mean I'm not going to argue with the cultures of other countries and, and what people are reading. It was just fascinating to see another um, element and maybe the more extreme. We don't necessarily get that in the United States. Fascinating. Look that up. Okay, so Banned Book Week. I've been linking a particular um, thing down below where you if basically tells you about if you have five minutes, if you have 10 minutes, if you have half an hour, like what you can do to make a difference and make a change. And a lot of it has to do with using your voice and your vote. But I'm also going to link a couple of other things. I loved participating this week with the band book week and it was our fall break. So it's not like I'm with my students. So I really had free time to really pursue this and, and do this. So that made this possible. With that being said, some of the cool things that I found that I'm really excited about, I will also put a link to. One of those things is a list of the 100 children's books over the last 100 years that have been frequently challenged and banned. That one's really fascinating. Some of the things you would expect and some of the things I was kind of a little bit surprised. What's being challenged? What's on there? Goosebumps is number two on the list, so that's kind of interesting. And then the other thing that I'm going to link is the um, National Coalition Against Censorship has a whole bunch of resources, so many things. And so I am linking their book censorship action kit. So that is also down below. Really cool little a slideshow that kind of goes through uh, all the different Things with Kids Right to Read. It's a Kids Right to Read action kit. It came out in 2022. I'll just show you um, what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and link that as well because it's pretty dang cool. Lots of cool information in there, just things that parents and kids can do and just rights that you have as a reader in this country. So I even read an article about some of the censorship and banning that is going on in Canada and how their 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 government handles it differently but I mean they're still seeing an uptick uh, in censorship just like we are it's been cool it's been a neat experience to open my eyes to some of this and um, I've even had a chance to just kind of share some thoughts and ideas with my own community here a little bit and of course promoting the library always and what they do and i um, feeling kind of lucky that my library in this community is not censoring but not bending to maybe some of the more extreme pushes for blocking books, patrons, readers, access to books. Anyway, it's been fun. I, as always, am super excited to read banned books and to celebrate all things literature. I think I found some really good middle grade and YA books to really highlight and focus in on. I still have a whole bunch of books that I can still read since I have not finished my goal yet. And I'm looking forward to reading other things for a couple days here. <laughs> I've been very focused on this goal. Anyway, I hope you continue to read banned books. Thanks for maybe participating with me this week. And thanks for, as always, supporting and celebrating reading. It's so important.
If you are enjoying my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, as always, I will see you next time. Happy reading.